Do you mind talking about what happened to Grand Funk and why it fell apart? I don't mind. What happened was when we were doing the, the reunion to, tour in 19, when we started 1996, uh, Don and Mel came to me and they said, we don't want you to do any solo dates while you're doing the Grand Funk dates because it would just be competition in the marketplace. And I said, I'll tell you what, I've been solo for a long time. I will go just Grand Funk for two years, but I have to play to my solo audience because I had played a lot of God rock. I mean, you know, there were people, uh, a lot of church going people that would come to see me. And uh, but actually, I put in three years. And that third year, because our first year with Punch Andrews, who managed Bob Seeger and uh, Kid Rock, um, th- we only had like 14 dates when we were playing, you know, and when he was managing us the first year in 1996. And it wasn't until 1997. Uh, do, you, do, you, to- do you mind? Do you mind? I just want, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to get the timeline here. So this was a reunion. So what happened? when you guys stopped playing because the last album i think you did did frank zappa not produce it that was in 76 yes so 76 so now you took a 20-year hiatus in the meantime you had gone solo yes and 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 don and mel i don't know what they what they were doing well uh in 1981 and 1982 uh we got back together and then mel announced to us that he couldn't fly anymore So we picked up a bass player from Flint, Michigan, Dennis Bellinger, a good friend of mine, Vietnam veteran, and uh, he could play and he could also sing. So uh, and he was a great bass player and and wonderful vocals. So we did uh, What's Funk uh, and uh, I forget Grand Funk Lives. Yeah, there's two albums that we did um, on Warner Brothers. And and actually, it was Irving Azoff who had the label Full Moon, and he kind of dumped us on Warner Brothers and started managing Glenn Fry. Um, and uh, so we had nobody at the label to really carry us in. Why and, could Mel? Why could Mel not fly anymore? Well, it can't. It, I don't know. We had some close calls, brother. I mean, really close calls. We left Oakland, California after we did 59 cities in 62 days. Wow. We, we left Oakland flying over the mountains. So we're going to go home. We're climbing, climbing, climbing. Boom. There was so much stress on those motors. The, the, on the right wing, uh, on the starboard side, it, it was a radial engine there's four engines the the furthest one out on the wing blows up into an orange ball of fire and we got 17,000 pounds of pa and equipment up front in the in the main section and the two bands uh grand funk and uh blood rock were in from the tail section the and the bulkhead and the tail back that's where the band and the crew sat so uh Man, it was a very sobering moment, moment, even though guys had lit some marijuana branches on fire and blew them out and, and holding them under each other's noses. And, you know, you know I mean, it was like a celebration, <laughs> last minute celebration before. So the, the pilot comes on, he says, we're going to turn around. We're going back to Oakland and we're going to have to do an emergency landing and uh, strap in. Everybody get in and strap in for emergency landing. And it's like, holy shit, man, are you kidding me? So we get, everybody gets in. The, and I remember looking at Craig Frost and he had, he was, man, he was white as a sheet. He was just, you know, everybody was thinking, this is it. This is it. We're going in, we're going down. You know, this is the, this is the movie. But when we, when we hit that runway, Mick, it's like all of these vehicles were, one side and the other and it's night this is dark you know but you could see they had it all lit up with their lights and and we go right on past all that stuff because they couldn't reverse the thrust to to slow that plane down you know and we went 
we went right off the end of the runway out into the cattails and all this swamp with this plane. And, uh, and when I grabbed the hold of the door, the handle, and I pull the handle like this, I see this foot come over my left shoulder and hit that door. It struck the door. The door went flying open. And Jim Rutledge, the lead singer of, of Blood Rock, dove out into the dark. <laughs> wow. You know, yeah, he was so scared, brother, that, you know, we were all going to burn up in that plane. And then everybody like joined him instantly jumping out, jumping out, jumping on each other. You couldn't see what the hell was going on there. And so that was that was one uh, that that was on Mel's mind. <laughs> and uh, and then another one was a, in a Learjet. We had chartered a Learjet and it was like uh, it was like the jolly green giant grabbed the hold of the nose cone on that jet and went just kind of and we didn't have seat belts on. We were at 42,000 feet. We hit clear air turbulence. And when this guy lands back at LaGuardia, um, he gets out, the pilot gets out and he's walking down the steps. His legs give out on him, dude. He goes down to the tarmac and he's like, just he's puking. He's, I mean, he he was, he was scared too. Oh my God. Was he scared? And the co-pilot, if it wasn't for the, him grab there's these little plates that go up in front of the the general electric uh jets you know the motors that uh upon starting it's kind of like a choke for him and he hit those and put them in there otherwise those those jets could have flamed out from the from that air cutting you know the clear air turbulent uh anyways we get out we we walk I look at that plane and it's got fuel tanks on the tips of the Lear jet and the, the paint was cracked all the way around. It's like that really gave, Oh my God. Yeah. It was, it was another close call. And, uh, so he, that just mounted up on him. That's, yeah. you know, it, it, uh, and that wasn't the only, I mean, those were the two really hairy ones where we thought maybe this was the end. But we had some other ones that, and he just, you know, he didn't like it. <laughs> so so well, does he, he must travel now. Yep. He got over it. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. He got over it. Okay. And, uh, and the, uh, the need for money will do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now, now, now that we've got that, let's go back to 1996. Okay. 1996. We start this reunion tour. I say, yes, I'll do it for two years. Uh, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to do some solo gigs. Um, they said, OK, blah, 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 blah. Uh, actually, I put in three, like I said, because the first year was very scant under Punch Andrews. And uh, so the third year was 1998. Don Brewer come to my room one night after this gig we did at Canocti Harbor up in California. I'm, I'm sure you probably played there, too. I don't recall if I have. I might have. But uh, Some, yeah. sometimes they go by me. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I hear you. But uh, it was after, you know, it was a party after the, sh- the show and everybody had a few beers or, you know, uh, there was some alcohol involved. And Don came to my room and he says, Mark, we all need to sign the individual ownership of the trademark into the corporation where it would have this pr- protective umbrella. And I I thought he was looking out for the best interest of the band. And I, so I listened to him and he tells me why I should do that. I said, okay, I'll do that. So he says, okay, I'll go to my room and get the papers. And I'm thinking as he left, I'm thinking, well, why the hell didn't he just bring the papers with it? Didn't dawn on me that I was getting sucker punched. And there were, that they were hijacking the trademark grand funk railroad, even though I wrote 92% of that music, uh, Oh, I left that off in case you called me. <laughs> uh, no, no worries. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, he brings it. I signed the papers that he had already had drawn up for, for everybody to put their individual ownership of the trademark into the corporation where it would have this protective umbrella. And then the next thing you know, I'm getting uh, phone calls saying they're going out 
as Grand Funk Railroad. And did I want to go out? Uh, they're, they're giving me ultimatums. You are no longer an officer in the corporation. I said, I beg your pardon. I'm no longer an officer in the corporation. This is the band that I started. I'm an original founding member. And you're telling me. <laughs> so it was kind of it was uh, evil in my eyes at the time. I'm thinking, boy, that's this is wrong, man. But as it's going down, as it's going down, I was hurt. And I'm thinking, man, they can't do this. But then, you know, the, the illegality came to to my attention when they took me to federal court in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And this federal judge told me he never want to see me back in his courtroom because if he did, he was going to be severe on me. I'm thinking this this asshole don't even know the band. He don't know my participation in it. He doesn't know what's going down. And the attorney that I had, he was sitting on his hands. It was like the worst days of my life at that point, I thought. Uh, and I, I got bullied around by those guys. Uh, and then my manager, Abby Steinman, he says, you know, let's stop using uh, Mark Farner, formerly of Grand Funk Railroad, because uh, uh, that's what this stipulation was. Uh, this federal judge said, uh, putting a permanent injunctive order on you, you can only advertise yourself formerly of Grand Funk Railroad or Grand Funk, and uh, it has to be half the font size as Mark Farner and only the, the first letter of Grand Funk Railroad, only those first letters are, are capitalized and must be capitalized. And so even if it said formerly of and the, the promoter used a small O, that's a violation. And all this stuff was so tiny, picky stuff, so insignificant, but they kept bringing all these threats. Uh, and so I've changed my moniker. I'm Mark Farner's American band. I applied for the trademark. I received the trademark from the federal government. And those guys had an opportunity to kick against or do whatever they would want to do, but they didn't do it until after I had already obtained the trademark. They sue me. They say it's going to cause interference in the marketplace. And I said, no way, man. Uh, how many other bands? I mean, the, the uh, Beach Boys went out as the American band. And I mean, there was a lot of, of this, but it was just the vindictiveness of uh, those guys. <laughs> and well, uh, why, why would why would they have wanted you out of the band? That doesn't even make sense to me. Yeah, it's so that they could do this without me, because that was when all of these bands were going out. You could you had uh, Journey without the lead singer. You had, you know, uh, Foreigner without the lead singer. And they just thought they were just going to roll in with those guys. And they did, because as it turns out, the fans just want to hear the music. They don't want to know about the legalities. And, that. and if they're not a hardcore fan that knows the band that keeps track of who the individual players are, they're just a fan of that music. They really don't give a rip who's playing it. Yeah, and that's the. That's the you way it brought, turned you brought out. A, a foreigner and there's no there's foreigner travels now with no original members whatsoever. Yeah, um, I, I remember doing a boat cruise, a rock and roll boat cruise. And all all the, the talk of the whole boat was how great foreigner was. And I'm thinking, well, th there's a reason for one thing. The guys in the new foreigner are probably in their 40s. Not, yeah. in, not not in their sixties or late sixties, early seventies, the way they would right. be in reality, right? And and so when the when the audience comes in, they see younger guys on stage. It makes them feel younger. I, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and the band does a great job, but they are a tribute act. There's not yeah. one. There's not one original member on stage. Yeah, and even though it's legal, brother Mick, how ethical is that to advertise and not tell the unsuspecting fans? that there's no original members in this mm -hmm. band. It, that's just dishonest to me, mm -hmm. even though it's legal, which gives you kind of a, an insight to how shit got as bad as it is right now in the world. <laughs> well, it's, it's come down to where names are franchised now. Um, yeah, exactly. Like I, I heard a story, uh, a bass player with the little river band that apparently he wasn't on any of the big albums at all. He, 
And he found out the name wasn't trademarked, so he trademarked it. So <laughs> all the original members of Little River Band can't use the name. And he's got a, a band out there, great band, but there's not one original member once again. Yeah. Yep. And, and a lot of that going on. Eh? Uh, it's it's uh, it's how low can somebody stoop? And and the fans are always the ones who get chumped on it. Mm-hmm. Seriously, the uh, they're not getting what they heard on the on the records that they bought. But in my humble opinion, I am who my songs say I am. Mm-hmm. It's not the other two guys. They aren't who my songs say I am. Okay. So uh, the unsuspecting audience goes and sees these different bands, the various ones who are flying under the original name, but they don't know the the inside of it. And they don't know that, you know, they're there to hear the music and that if they hear the music, they're they're tickled. And uh, it's too bad. It really is too bad. It's, you know, there should be some kind of site where it's you give a star rating of these bands. And and before you go see the band, you go to this site with a star rating. Let's see. There's seven original members. How many of those original members are in this version now of this band and and give some background? But there's none of that. Mm-hmm. But it, it, there's there certainly is a need for it in society, as far as I'm concerned, just to get some honesty back in there. Hmm. Interesting. That's really, that's actually really interesting. Hey, thanks for joining us. Check out our other vignettes and full episodes from a wide variety of guests for more great content. Please like, share, and subscribe, and become a member at socialenergypresents.com to access premium content and earn valuable energy points just for watching.